So hello everybody, how are you today? In today's video we're going to go a little bit down, deep down into this bulk import. I did a video last Monday, link down below if you went nuts and comment like crazy and gave a lot of kinds of tips and tricks. So we're going to go through those because the video was a little bit quick. It was most like focusing on the actual, you know, hard to, but there is, you know, it's things that you can do to um, customize those little M functions even more. So if you haven't seen the video, go check that out first and then come back here and see what else you can do with these small functions. But with that said, we are here on a blank Power BI um, file. We're going to go to uh, more and let me copy. We are going to go to folder and we are going to go to the folder where I have a PDF, CSV, Excel file. We're going to go nuts. So if you remember what I said on the video, you click edit, you don't click uh, combine. And let's start with the first comment. It was uh, from David and it says, um, you can do the same for PDFs and that is correct, David. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go here. I am going to check PDF and I am going to show you this first. So this is the documentation for the M function. It is PDF tables. And then it says, um, just put in the PDF and we'll fix it. That's the way M does things, but there are actually options. There are parameters that you can add to that function. And there is a start page, end page, uh, multiple pages, control whether similar tables uh, on consecutive pages will be autom automatically combined and enforce borderline. So I'm going to show you how to do this, these two and the other ones is exactly the same. So if we go back to Power Query, we're going to go here to add column, custom column the same way we did the last time. And we're going to use pdf.tables. And where is my field? Did I miss something on an adaptive? Okay, whatever. It is content. We are going to grab the content. If you don't know what I'm doing, check out the video I did on Monday, okay? And now we are going to put the parameters that Power Query said we had, and it was a start page. And that means that if you don't want to have, and we need that in, in that. So start page, I don't know, one, we said we just want to import one page or page number one, or we want to import two pages in the page. So two pages, the starting one and in two instead of importing everything, because you know that there is just one table on those two pages that you really want and adding these parameters to the function, it will allow you to do just that. And remember, there's two more parameters in case you need them, go and check them out. It is specified on the function. So if you go here to remove all the columns like we did the last time, go here and open it up, then it will, give us the contents of those PDFs. And in this case, it will give us only page one and page two because that's what we asked for. And it's super quick, as you can see, it works very, very well. The next tip, it comes from Christopher and he said that there is a function also for access. So if you have access databases, um, works the same way. Now, I do not have any access database, but I can tell you that the function works is like this access database. I think it's database like that. And that will allow you to bulk import from multiple access databases. How cool is that? Thank you for sharing. Now, um, I have another comment from, um, let me, 
from Ralph and he says, uh, you know, my CSV files, they don't have comma, they have semicolon. And uh, I need to change this CSV function to be able to do that. Well, let's look at that, Ralph. So if we go to the documentation for the CSV, you're going to see here that the CSV dot document also has a ton of parameters that you can customize. And I do this cheat all the time, all the time. Let, I mean, I've learned Power Query through the, power, through the user interface. The user interface has been my teacher. So best trick I can give you. So if you go here, I'm going to show you, and you go new source, CSV, and we're going to grab the CSV. And let Power Query do its magic. There we have it. OK. Go up here and look. So here is the CSV document uh, function that we are using. But here it gives you the parameters that are allowed. So you have delimiter. So you can change that to semicolon if that is what your file has. Or you can change the number of columns. I, I normally duplicate um, queries when I import in different CSV files, but into the same file. And then I have to change always these columns because, you know, often you don't want to have the same number of columns. So you have to change it here, otherwise you will get like nulled. But here you say, you can say, I just want to have the first three columns and it will give you the first three. Okay. And then which type of encoding it is and in the, the quote, how do they should manage it. You know, in different parts of the world, the format is different. God knows why. I don't understand why we can't just agree on something. Who cares if it is metric or if it's imperial or whatever? Who cares? Just agree on something. Either way, until that happens, here you have the possibility to modify that. So when you are putting your, let's say that we go in here, we're going to duplicate. And we're going to go up here and delete until end. I've shown you these tricks already a thousand times. And then in here, instead of PDFs, what we want to do is CSV. And now we're going to do the custom column. Yeah, but again, but this time we're going to use CSV document. And now we're going to put content. And you say, oh, I need to change the parameters. Where were those parameters? Well, guess what? We just copy them. So you can just remove that. And there you have the parameters. And then you can change them as you want. So let Power Query tell you what it is that you need. It, most of the times it's in there, in plain view. Excellent. So another tip, which is very, very cool. Let me show you. It is um, mm, 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 here. There, and I am going to do one thing for that to work. So this tip comes from Giuseppe Gullo and says, I would like to add to keep the attribute hidden as false. What is that? Well, on that folder, I had two CSV files. If I refresh now, Are you caching this or it's not open? Let's see. It's not working, obviously. Now that I'm going to show you, I'll show you with Excel because that is probably going to work faster. Either way, hold on for a second with that. I'll show you in a second. Excel because we're going into Excel. Excel has also parameters. The Excel function has also parameters. Let me show you. So here we have Excel. And these are the parameters that you have. You have two. One is use headers or not. And the other one is delay types. And this trick actually came from Haichi. We know who he is. He's been participating into our Power Query challenges. And uh, he said, well, you told me, Ruth, that you should always set the third parameter to true. 
I did, didn't I? And I didn't say it on that video. Well, here's the thing. I pointed him to a blog post that Chris Webb has that explains, you know, he's been playing with that parameter to see, okay, what does it do? Let me show you what's going on. I will link, obviously, to his blog post down below so you can go and check them out. But let's look at here. If we go to... To, 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 to Excel. And we're going to import one Excel file. Just a second. So, and uh, we click there. Okay. And we go up here. You're going to see the parameters that Power Query sets by default. It says null to um, promote headers, basically. And uh, it says true to uh, delay data types. And what it basically means is that it doesn't allow to the Excel.workbook function has the possibility to get the data types from Excel and put it in there. But what Chris Webb found was that if you have that, it will delay. He says, if it is set to true, so it says if you delay when the headers happen, it will be faster than if you set it to false. Now, Excel.workbook sets true by default. At least it does now. I don't know, maybe it was false before. Uh, but now it is set true by default. So it doesn't set the data types. It does it with a, ch with a change type step instead. Okay, so if we go here and we duplicate that one and then we go in here, we pick Excel and there it is, perfect. And then we go here and obviously now we don't have a CSV, we have a Excel workbook and then we have con where did my where did my thing go so now here you have the possibility to say true to promote headers and true to delay types i don't know i don't know if you don't specify anything and doing it manually if it sets true by default the thing is that when you're using excel workbook i've checked and if we don't specify anything, it doesn't promote the check types. So you will see, oh, do you remember the attribute false? Here's the thing. Here in attributes, there is something called hidden. And what it tells us is if a file is open in, um, it is open basically, if somebody has opened the file. So here I have opened one of the files. You see it here, right? So the hidden is says true here. It means that one of the files is open. You can also see it here on the file name. That means that the file has been opened. And when you try to import stuff, it will break. Okay, so if you set this to false, even if it's open, you won't get the error, okay? Obviously, when you close the Excel file and you click refresh, it will work again, but why risk it? So definitely, definitely. Um, but we weren't to the true. If we go here and um, I make it a little bit going back and forth. I hope you're following. And here we go to data. And here we go to, you see that it didn't, it didn't promote the headers and it didn't change uh, the data types either. So I am guessing that it's true by default, but hey, now you know what it is, you know, you know what it does. And maybe in all the files it was set to false. So if you have having performance problems, you can set it to true and it's your work. So, oh my God, we're 15 minutes into the video. Um, the last thing is that I've got 
thousands of questions, you know, comments like, oh, Ruth, you are hard coding the name in Power Query that you don't do that, <laughs> which is true. I'm sorry. I just did it super quickly. And the thing is that I have like a thousand videos on how to change headers without hard coding. I apologize that I did it just on that video. I didn't think of it. Um, as you know, it, either way, I'm going to link to those videos down below so you can check it and see how not I, ways that you can avoid hard coding things into Power Query. <laughs> so love your comments. Continue, continue. I just, that, it's just been great. I think it's been great for all of us to read all the comments actually. So, okay. I'm going to finish another video because we're 16 minutes in and this is insane. So have a great Monday and I'll see you again on Wednesday as always. So until then, take care. Bye.